I'm going to work so God can use me. I'm going to work. I'm going to work. work. can use us celebrating Reverend Martin Luther King Day today celebrating his legacy which lives on we're going to shine we're going to shine so God can use us step each time <laughs> we're gonna trust so that God can use us I'm gonna trust so Welcome to Christ Church United this morning. We're going to live so God can use us. We're going to live so. Well, good morning, church, and we're going to start off the top of the hour worship this week with our announcement celebrating the life and ministry of our church time together. And we had a great time on Friday evening. Lowell Learns, which is an arts ministry of Christ Church United, uh, was in conjunction with the Family Resource Network and the Old Yellow Meeting House, and we had this family fun music night led by Mel Steger. And about 12 kids and their families uh, spent a joyful 45 minutes singing and clapping and dancing and learning a lot of great things about music. And Lowell Learns is trying to schedule something each month. And next month we have Mawa, Making Art with Artists, which we will have three um, art classes, virtual art classes for ages 10 to 14. And they will be during vacation week and registration will be open soon for that. And you can check out our website, lowelllearns.com for news about the art programs and all of the upcoming programs. Quick reminder that we'll be having our next retirement Bible school on Tuesday, January 26th at 2 p.m. 
continue our stray with Reverends Thurlow and Millen of the writings of Julian of Norwich. We'll also share that the group formerly known as Pasta and Praise has evolved into a group of prayer and spiritual practice. And the intention going forward is to have 10-week units that focus on prayer for our members of the group and the wider community while having a space to grow in spiritual practice. Please do join the group formerly known as Pasta and Praise on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Lastly, I wanted to share that Emily Wally and I welcomed another foster child to our home last night. She is 10 years old and she's awesome. Because of this, I'll be taking the next week off. We will not be having Jeopardy after church today and we will not have Sunday school next week. Thank you, Miles. Thank you for the announcements, the life and ministry of our church. And as we move for, forward into our service this morning, sort of a companion song with our opening song, I'm going to live so God can use me. We know it's not always easy, and we certainly know how much oppression takes place now and took place against Martin Luther King Jr. and the civil rights movement. And this great song came out of that civil rights movement or was adapted to it. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on walking, keep on talking, marching down to freedom land. Now we're gonna sing that all over again now that you remember the tune. Walking down to freedom land. Sing with me. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, oh, turn me around. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching down to freedom land. We're not gonna let any hatred turn us around. There's plenty of it, but not in Christ. Ain't gonna No injustice is going to turn us around from what how we know we want Christ teaches us to live in the world. No injustice. turn us around. morning. Welcome to worship here at Christ Church United in Lowell. I am Miles, the Minister of Faith and Action here. We welcome you on Zoom, on Facebook, on YouTube. 
knowing that it is good to be in the house of the Lord, even if that house is a digital house this morning. Here at CCU, we strive to be a community of love that welcomes all. So welcome. Welcome if you're here for the first time or welcome if you've been here for 30 or 40 years. It is good to see your face and have you among us this morning. Welcome if you are in a suit or in your pajamas. Welcome if you are young or old. Welcome if you are rich or poor or somewhere in between. Welcome to all because all bodies, all people, all genders, all races, all shapes and sizes are welcome here. Again, welcome to this body where we are not perfect, but where we strive to be healed and made whole by the love of God and the way of Jesus. As a sign of our welcome together, I'll invite you all to take yourselves off mute and we will pass the peace with each other this morning. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And also with you. Also with you. Also with you. God's peace to all. Peace to everybody. Peace to all. Peace, everybody. Good morning. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. God bless. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Amen. Good morning, Gretchen. Lovely to hear your voice. Good morning, Gretchen. Good morning, Marion. Good morning, Joan. God's peace. Well, let's move to peace from peace to a new song. Let justice roll like a river. And we enjoyed this song during our prayer vigil on Thursday. And a good friend of mine recorded it with me. So let justice roll like a river and wash all oppression away. The a friend that helped. My friend Judy. Let justice roll like a river and wash all oppression away. Come, O oh God, and take us, move and shake us. Come now and make us a Beloved, our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the letter of Paul to the Romans. 
Your love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Love one another with the affection of siblings. Try to outdo one another in showing respect. Do not grow slack, but be fervent in spirit. The one you serve is Christ. Rejoice and hope. Be patient under trial. Persevere in prayer. Look on the needs of God's holy people as your own. Be generous in offering hospitality. Bless your persecutors. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Have the same attitude toward all. Do not be condescending to those who are not as well off as you. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil with evil. Be concerned with the highest ideal in the eyes of all people. Do all you can to be at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge. Leave room, my friends, for God's wrath. To quote scripture, vengeance is mine, I will pay them back, says our God. But there is more. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them drink. For in doing so, you will heap burning coals upon their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by doing good. My friends, these words are breathed into us by the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And would you pray with me? Faithful God, holy and true, you have drawn us here this morning in this community of faith to pour your blessing upon us. God, we give you thanks for bringing us to this space, for bringing us into this community and for revealing your spirit of love in the life and ministry of Jesus and through each one of us. God, we ask that this same spirit of love empower us to receive your love, to reflect your love in each of our siblings in this community and to live your love in the world through concrete actions of justice. Help us, O oh God, as we hear your words this morning. May it fall on the rich soil of our hearts. May your word align our hearts with your divine heart that your love for us may empower and transform us to live lives of love and justice in the world. And may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be found pleasing in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. You know, something happens to us when we really come to know ourselves 
as loved. And not just intellectually, not just in a surface way, something happens in us when we come to know in an absolute and final way that we are truly and powerfully loved. I remember several years ago now, when I first began the practice of breath meditation, my teacher in our first class encouraged us to get in touch with the intention, the reason why we were coming to meditation. For me, it was easy. I was aware of a constant aggression in my heart in those days, especially towards myself. And I wanted to cultivate a softer heart, a heart that could really be opened to love. Well, several months into the practice, I found myself having a conversation with my mother. And we all know how conversations with mothers can go, right? I mean, some of us even know those from both sides of the conversation. Well, this was one of those conversations. Only it wasn't one of those conversations. Because even though the dialogue was set up in a way that so many of our conversations had been before, something was different in me. Something had shifted in my heart. In short, I had come to know that I am loved, that I am truly, dearly, deeply loved. And because I knew that I was loved, I could bring a whole different way of being into that conversation with my mother. And through that conversation, she knew that I loved her too. I mean, isn't that the way? When we finally, truly, really come to know in the deepest part of our being that we are loved, everything begins to shift. Over the past few weeks, here at Christ Church United in Lowell, we have been getting into this series about what it means to be community in the way of Jesus. We've seen that being community in the way of Jesus means being gathered, being brought together. We've seen how being in community in the way of Jesus means being held as beloved. And we've seen that we really only come to know of ourselves as beloved in community. Well, this week, we shift our attention from the inside to the outside, if you will. From how we are called to become known as beloved in community to how we are called to be the beloved community out there. How we are called to be the beloved community for our town, for our area, for our nation, for the world. And it is only fitting really that this shift of focus to being, to embodying the beloved community in the world should come to us on this weekend as we honor and celebrate the life of our beloved brother in Christ, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. For Dr. King 
knew what it was like to work for justice in the world from a place of deep love, from a place of deep prayer inside. So my siblings are going to tell you that I discovered something as I was preparing for this sermon today. I learned about an aspect of Dr. King's life that's not so well known. I mean, we know that he was a fierce advocate for social justice. We know that he did a lot of work in the world. But in addition to being a fierce advocate for social justice, in addition for working so hard in the world for change, he was also nurtured and he also nurtured and was nurtured by a life of deep contemplative prayer. Dr. King saw that prayer was an essential element of social engagement, not praying problems away, but being rooted deeply in prayer. In fact, Dr. King died shortly before he was to make an extended retreat at the Trappist Monastery at Gethsemane, Kentucky, Kentucky under the direction of the spiritual master, Thomas Merton. This itself stands as a testimony to his value for contemplation as the driving force of love for action, for justice in the world. Now somehow it didn't really surprise me for if justice is what love looks like in public as Dr. Cornell West reminds us, it stands to reason that love must be cultivate, cultivated alongside justice. Justice and love are inseparable. They are inseparable. In our scripture reading this morning, we hear Paul preaching and teaching the early Christian community in Rome about how they are to be in relationship with each other, how we are to be in relationship with each other about what love looks like in the public life of community in the way of Jesus. And while there are many lines that stand out in this reading, the bookends of this text this morning speak the most powerfully to me. Let love be sincere and overcome evil by doing good. Let love be sincere and overcome evil by doing good. I mean, these two lines stand out because sometimes in our struggle for justice, we can forget to ground ourselves in love. We can forget that in building a world where all can benefit from the fruit of the earth, we have to start with love. We can forget that when we vow to take on the threats of racism, poverty, and war, as Dr. King was so committed in doing, that we have to start with love. I mean, it's like Dr. King once said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Only love can do that. I mean, this too is part of what it means to be community 
in the way of Jesus. To live in justice with ourselves, with each other, with God and with the planet. And to root our work for justice in deep prayer, in deep love. Where do we struggle to be open to live in justice, to live in love? What are some of the concrete steps that we can take? Not only to nurture this community of the beloved, but also to embody the beloved community in the world. How might we nurture the roots of our work for justice in the world in the unconditional love of God? My dear siblings, God has called us into this community. God has called us to follow together in the way of Jesus. May we allow ourselves to be opened by this love. May we allow ourselves to be open to this love. And then may we allow God to empower us to work for justice in our world through love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Henry. And we are going to now sing together this powerful and iconic hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And the words are in your bulletin and they're also going to be on the screen. And I thank Voices for helping us. Let every voice and sing to the heaven ring, bring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise, high listening skies. Let it resound, let it the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith. God has taught us. Sing a song full of hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road. Yes. 
My friends, now is the time in our service which we bring our prayers before one another and before God. And so I invite you to unmute yourselves, to let your prayer intentions be known. And as is our custom here, we invite you to end your petitions with, this is my prayer, so that we may join you with, this is our prayer. And so dear friends, for what do we pray this morning? I'd like to pray for the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King and that his legacy live on through all of us in love, in community, in our church, and throughout the world. This is my prayer. This is our prayer. Dear Lord, I pray for a peaceful inauguration and a peaceful transition in the months ahead. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our, this our prayer. prayer. My prayer is a prayer of hope that we can love in the face of hate, in the face of insurrection. We can still find a place to love. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our prayer. prayer. <laughs> Father, I come to you before you today to thank you. I want to thank you for the mother that you put in my life who taught us love, who taught us and walked us through the early days of the civil rights movement as we marched in the streets and we marched together as a family. Thank you for her. Thank you for the family I've known. And thank you for this new family, which I have just learned to be with here at the church. That is my prayer. This, this is, is, this our, is prayer. our prayer. Prayers for our friends and those we don't know who are sick, recovering, who are lonely, and looking to find you, God. This is my prayer. This, this is, is our, this prayer. our prayer. <laughs> For those who continue to struggle with the virus, for the lives that are impacted in a special way, for the homeless folks who gathered in the shelter of First Church in Cambridge, who are now having to go to hotels because of an outbreak in the shelter. For all of those who are housing insecure, for all of those who face uncertain futures, this is my prayer. This is our, this is our, prayer. Prayer. This is our prayer. Loving and faithful God, we bring these prayers before you. Those which we have spoken, the many which remain silent in our hearts. We ask that you hear these prayers, that you grant them in your wisdom. And to God, we ask for our hearts to be broken open by love, that you may align our hearts to your great divine heart, that you may strengthen and guide us in our work, a love for ourselves, for you, for each other, for all of the world. 
Guide us and strengthen us, O God. For we pray all of these things in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. And now we pray together in the way of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us for our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, as we celebrate Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, I wanted to tell a short story about one of the women who nourished him while he did his work. More than him, she actually nourished the entire Montgomery bus boycott movement. Her name is Georgia Gilmore. And what she did was she organized other women to sell food. And they did it at beauty salons and cab stands and at churches during meetings of the Montgomery Improvement Association, the organization that was working to, uh, uh, to organize the Montgomery bus boycott through Holt Street Baptist Church in Montgomery. Here's a quote about her from uh, John Edge. She offered these women, many of whose grandmothers were born into slavery, a way to contribute to the cause that would not raise suspicion of white employers who might fire them from their jobs or white landowners who might evict them from the houses they rented. The money they raised was what helped fund ways for people to not use the buses in Montgomery. So it contributed to uh, paying for insurance and gas and wagons and repairs to the vehicles. Here's what she called this group of women who she worked with on this project. She called it the club from nowhere because as her sister told John Edge, the author of this book about her years later, quote, it was like, where did this money come from? It came from nowhere. Let us all be nowhere. Let us all be the resources that come out of nowhere in search of justice and truth. If you feel so moved to give to Christ Church United this morning, can give in three ways. Can give online at wewelcomeall.org or you can actually text to give with your cell phone number. Lastly, you can send a check to us at the church office, 1 Bartlett Street, Lowell, Massachusetts. Thank you. And thank you, especially Georgia Gilmore, for your offering and all it made possible today. Amen. My friends, as we celebrate today, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, as we celebrate our beloved community, we know that his words are no less needed today as they were so many decades ago. We know the truth is still there with us, with our beloved community. And Voices is going to help me this morning singing Precious Lord. Not with their, wor their voices, but their words reading some quotes from Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. that have touched their hearts. And Bob is going to take it away, leading us in with the drums. Thank you all.
believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. This is why right, temporarily defeated, is stronger than evil triumphant. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war, that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? In the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. We must learn to live together as brothers, or perish together as fools. We celebrate Martin Luther King Day, and we reflect on some of his famous quotes. A riot is the language of the unheard. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. And the words chosen to share by our Dear Voices member Gretchen. We must accept infinite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. Precious floating behind, lead me on where I stand. Take my hand, precious. And as we move from that to the close of our service. Yes, I'm unmuted. Good. <laughs> Let's sing our response to all that we have heard and said and sung and prayed today. Yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I will trust you and obey when your spirit speaks to me. Say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart and agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Oh, we'll say yes. We'll say yes. Yes, dear friends, yes, God has gathered us. And yes, God now sends us to be God's love in the world, to be God's justice among our sisters, our brothers, all of our siblings. God now sends us. For now, our service really begins. Amen. <laughs>